Uh, I'm, I'm going to do. I'm going to be very brief. I've, I've got a very simple sort of uh, concept that I, that I want to get across, which is, you know, why why do we need some formal models uh, as as part of this content? And if you you know if you start out with SNOMED CT, you've got codes for numbness and right and arm and leg and 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 those kind of things, and you know, without any kind of structuring of the information. You can use the same codes to represent a statement where you mean numbness of the right arm and left leg, or same same codes, numbness of the left arm and right leg, which if you're trying to do neurology things are tremendously different findings clinically. And so, uh, you know, if you're talking about modeling, you need to know somehow, you know, right is modifying arm and left is, is modifying or uh, leg, etc., and that numbness should be distributed across both of those body locations. And, uh, that's, that's the heart of the question. And if we take just a slightly different example and talk about weight representation, and you know, weight should, you think, would be one of the easier things to describe. Uh, you know, you could have one site that's saying, you know, I've got a dry weight of 70 kilograms, another one that says I've got a weight of 70, and then there's a second data collection piece, they say uh, that's a dry weight. And if you, you know, represent that information now more uh, more formally, you know, basically you're saying dry weight is 70 kilograms, where the other one is saying weight is 70 kilograms. And, oh, by the way, this particular weight type is a dry weight. Uh, and then you can put it into uh, a data representation just using XML that says, you know, uh, and, and you've got real loin coats here and real SNOMED coats now interspersed in, in the data uh, because loin has a code for dry weight and it's also got a code for plain old weight it's got a code for weight type and it makes no uh, uh, decision for the clinical user about whether you should do that if you will the pre-coordinated representation of this information or the post-coordinated uh, representation and so these are these are two models that have exactly the same information content but it's represented in different ways in the models uh, so if, if you put that in, and of course you could do this as objects or you could do this as any, any kind of database representation, but the implication or the, the, the point is this, that if you're trying to create the kind of applications that uh, Josh was talking about, uh, you need to know the difference between uh, those two models. Uh, it, it has to do with how you query and calculate against the information. So. If you, if you take that first representation, you know you've got, and, and we're, doing, we're doing just a sort of a classic SQL query, you would say, you know, collect, you know, for this patient uh, whose number ends in 789, you know, find me observations where observation type is uh, dry weight and then give me the value and the units of measure. And I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna find the ones that are dry weights and then I'm gonna find the one that's a current weight and I'm gonna do a subtraction. And in the second case, uh, you're doing exactly the same thing, but the actual query is different because you're going to say where observation type is just weight, and then where weight type is dry or weight type is current. And so the, the information content is identically the same, but what was in one, you know, one slot of the, of the model in the top one, uh, you end up with you know, two columns or two attributes, uh, two elements, in the model in the second one. And the executable logic is different whether you're querying data of the top form or the bottom form. And obviously this has, you know, we're talking about the logical structure here and the binding to terminologies. It has nothing to do with whether you're representing these objects in a relational database or an object-oriented database or triple store or you have to understand sort of what portion of the semantics are in which element or field or uh, characteristic of that item. And, uh, and so the, the whole point is that whatever strategy you use, and, and RDF is, is, is better than most, you need uh, a common shared information model against which you develop the queries uh, that allow data access and storage. And, and create the kind of applications then that, that, that Josh has been talking about. Uh, I would just stress that with weights and heights and blood pressures, 
are the easiest kinds of things to deal with. And when you get into other things like signs, symptoms, diagnosis, problem list, negation, it becomes the, the, um, the n-dimensional space that you're dealing with becomes huge. And so you have to have uh, a formal way of representing those, those ideas. Um, and then we're trying to be comprehensive. You need, you need sets of data, these kind of data elements that, that span uh, everything from allergies, medications, medication administration, problem lists, signs and symptoms, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, you need a lot. So that's my, that's my very simple one, one sort of concept. Uh, however you express these things, you need information models that, that represent the logical structure of the information and the binding to standard terminologies uh, so that you can create interoperable software based on that logical construct. I'll stop there. Okay, probably do one.